How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make Bakey's track take it further. This is what it sounds like. The drop from the track can be broken down in just two parts. And the drums. Let's start with the bass. Great, so this is a preset from my new pack UK Garage Volume 3, and it's the Take It Further preset. Great, so in both oscillator A and oscillator B, we have the saw wave. So this, is if you click initiate preset, will come up first, but if you go to analog, basic shapes, it can also be found there. So yeah, this is the exact same thing, although obviously it looks slightly different. And what we have is both of them fine-tuned by 26 cents. So this one is negatively fine-tuned by 26, and this one is positively. If I unfine-tune that. Great, so yeah, when you detune it, it really creates that uh, effect that they're fighting against each other. What I've then done in oscillator B is up the unison by two. And if you increase the unison, it makes it a lot wider. You'll probably need headphones to hear this. I've also lowered the detune a little bit and put it at 0 0.03. Uh, by default, it's on 0 0.25, which is a little bit too much. If we have a look on the effects, we've then got this distortion. So we're actually using the filter from this distortion. If I put it on off mode, then it would be off. Rest in piss, headphone users. But yeah, if you put it in post, they can cut out all the frequencies. Yeah, so I've selected the diode one uh, and put the drive all the way up to 100%. You can also go through and change the different distortion types. Great, if we have a look at these macros, this macro is controlling the um, frequency cutoff of the filter on the distortion unit. So if we were op to open this up, Yeah, you can play around with that and completely change the power of the bass by adding more high end to it. Pro tip, if you wanna add it throughout the track, you should control the macro um, and use this automation. So. Using automation like that really helps your track sound more professional as most of the pros add lots of different automations throughout their track. This includes in their bass, their drums, and pretty much everything. Great, after that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your bass is in mono. So if we go to audio effects, go to utility, and put in a utility, we put it in bass, mono, and let's do everything above 200 just to be safe. And I've also added this kick start and side chained it to the kick. So if you click on audio mode um, and you put the band on, then it just side chains the bass below whatever frequency you put it to. So I've put it to 399, anywhere around that sort of fine. You could do it lower, higher, it's sort of all about um, your preference really. Next we've got the second little bass. If you have a look at the middle of the first, we're just in D and then we go down to E. Um, we've got this second little bass and that's just playing the exact same note um, the whole time but we which is C but then we've got this uh, pitch bend here so the the note sounds like it's sort of changing um, you could completely add any sound I've just gone for one of the presets for my pack so we can try this. so if you want something really dirty you could go for this great let's move on to the drums just to let you know, all of the drums used in today's video are from my UK Garage Volume 2 pack. It's just been released today um, and it's on sale at the moment to so get it while it's still on sale. I will be putting the price up after about a week. Great, so firstly we've got the kick. So yeah, it's quite a busy kick. I actually used uh, the drum bus for this. 
Uh, normally I just use a sampler, but um, yeah, I was playing around with the, the beat itself. So yeah, use the drum bus and I've not really added any effects apart from this Saturn, which is on both the kick and the bass. This is basically like the Ableton's own effect drum bus, but it's a little bit um, pricier and I think sounds a bit cleaner or quite a lot cleaner to be honest. Um, but yeah, and there's this preset called V1 Mastering Magic and I put it on my kick and bass on the group and I think it just sounds so good. Um, so without it, and with it, it sort of helps bring everything together. Um, yeah, and so let's move on to the rest of the drums. So yeah, we've got this shaker loop. And then we've got another shaker loop. And then on top of that, we've got a snare. Along with another snare. And another snare. If we have a look at this snare, it's actually a chop from an amen break. There's actually some breaks in the pack. Great, and once you've got the shakers and the snare, I've added some hats. Yeah, if we have a look at all of the individual tracks, I've not really got any effects on any of them apart from the snares, in which I've got this reverb, which has a quite short decay and a fairly reasonable amount of wet to it. Uh, and that's on all of them, actually. Um, yeah, I think adding reverb onto a snare really helps add that tail um, that you hear in Bakey's tracks. Uh, without it, they sound a bit dry and um, a bit stale. So yeah, make sure you add some reverb on them. Uh, you can use any reverb. I just use the Ableton Stock Reverb, which I think is a pretty good reverb, to be honest. Um, it's probably the least complicated. And yeah, and then lastly, we've just got this vocal. Which is just a ragged vocal. So yeah, if you liked this video, please comment down below which video you want to see next. And as always, I will see you next time. And watch this video if you want to learn more garage tips. See you later.